Disney World's most iconic restaurant has changed. We are dining inside Cinderella's Castle, and there have been some big changes at Cinderella's Royal Table. Cinderella's Royal Table is a meal where you're hosted by Cinderella inside Cinderella Castle in Magic Kingdom. It is widely considered one of the most popular meals in Disney World. After all, can you really be dining inside Cinderella Castle? I'm not really sure you can. This meal has you dining with Cinderella as well as her princess friends. In the past, that has been Ariel, Aurora, Jasmine, and Snow White. And we'll see if those ladies are here tonight as well. Food tends to be adequate and nothing to like write home about, but that's not really what you're paying for. You're really paying to eat inside the castle and meet those Disney princesses while you're at it. This restaurant serves breakfast lunch and dinner and the characters are available at all three meals. Pricing at this meal has increased with the return of characters. It is now $65 per adult and $39 per child at breakfast and then $79 per adult and $47 per child at lunch and dinner. Now Cinderella's Royal Table does offer mobile dining check-in which is offered in the My Disney Experience app. With that you can just check in on your phone so instead of heading to the host desk when you arrive you can go to where your reservation is listed in your My Disney Experience app and hit start check-in. Enter all those details and you'll get a text when your table is ready. Once you enter into the castle's waiting chamber you get to meet Cinderella and little kiddos are given magic wands or sabers which is very cool. We might ask for some of those ourselves because uh, we're children at heart. From there, you walk up a winding stone staircase to the dining room, which has plush tapestries and a lot of very, very beautiful decorations with light coming through the stained glass windows. And if you get a seat near the window, views out into Fantasyland. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, just as long as you do have one before midnight. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah, that's the goal. Yes, of course. So the place setting at Cinderella's Royal Table is a napkin. You get a wishing star, which is very exciting. Um, your menu, of course, which is a beautiful picture of the castle. And then we are in the dining room with this amazing, very regal, palatial feel. It's relatively small in here. It's a little noisy, otherwise very nice. Are you excited? I was born excited. Uh, we already have spoken to Ariel. She came immediately to our she table. She recognized us immediately. Immediately she saw us and she said, that's me and, and yeah. that's Eric. Yeah. Perfect. We must use the same thing. Oh, of course. Of course. Do you get the beachy wave? Of course. What's that tell me all about? I'm really excited because we got a window side table and I was expecting the view to be kind of reflective at night and hard to see. Yeah. But you can see right out into the rest of Fantasyland, including the carousel. All right. The menu at Cinderella's Royal Table is a pre Fix. It is an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, and you get your choice of each. Uh, Non-alcoholic beverages are included, which is really, really cool. Now, Magic Kingdom is a dry park, but at many table service restaurants, you can get wine and beer, um, and there actually is liquor now at Skipper Canteen, but Cinderella's Royal Table does have a selection of wines and wine flights and even some specialty wine cocktails. So as you eat, the princesses will come around to your table. Tonight we have Jasmine, Aurora, Ariel, and Snow White up here. Um, and of course you do meet Cinderella on your way in. There's also a special sort of happening that occurs sort of regularly throughout uh, your meal where you are given this wishing star and the building sort of lights up with magic as you make a wish. I would tell you what I wished for, but then it wouldn't come true. Oh, it's just something to make a Oh, of course. All right, so for our appetizer course, we have got the soup of the day, which today is a butternut squash that is completely plant-based for Breed Love. Surprise! Yeah, so I'm so sorry. It's for Prince Eric. For my entree, I went with one of the new entrees. There is a new menu here at Cinderella's Royal Table as of two days before we're filming this. Uh, this is the braised beef with a carrot and coriander puree, shallot jam, and a horseradish gremulata. So... That sounds good. Let's give it a try. Do you remember when I asked Ariel at Opera Shoes if she eats a lot of fish and she got really mad? <laughs> if you want to see me ask Ariel if she eats fish like a dummy, you can watch our Opera Shoes review where I did so. That's the other meal where you can dine in a castle with the princesses. I'm going to try braised beef now. That's pretty good. The um, texture of the meat itself is similar to pot roast and it goes really well with all of the accompaniments. I think the best... I think a really good bite is one that has a little bit of everything. 
My absolute favorite thing is the shallots. They add a really nice textural element and a bit of like a vinegary sour element that's nice. It's on the mild side. The meat's a little more salty than I'd like it, but it's not so much that I'm finding it like unpleasant at all. I don't think it's something that I'll consider super memorable, but it is like pleasant. It's a perfect portion for the start of a meal. And it's a little more unique than something like the charcuterie or the castle salad. That's appetizing. Let's talk about this plant-based butternut squash soup with plant-based sour cream and these croutons. Stop the presses. Best of fest. Best of fest. We're not at a fest. Yeah. That's good. I think it's like dessert. It is dessert-like. It's really sweet. Butternut squash flavor, which is not too far off from tasting like pumpkin. There are a lot of savory herbs, so it's not like you're gonna put marshmallows on top all of a sudden. The plant-based sour cream, I'd say, is more of a visual. It's not providing any flavor that I can detect, but the soup itself is so deliciously flavored. For my entree, I went with the Magic Carpet Ride. This is a spice crusted pork tenderloin and pork belly with curry couscous, glazed rainbow carrots, and a red peppercorn flying carpet. Um, and our server, Kathy, did let me know that there are 17 spices in this. Um, and that if you want some other spices, you can typically find them at Middle Eastern stores, but that they do make their own 17 spice blend here. Um, and it smells really, really tasty. And Breedlove, aka Prince Eric, did get the uh, single vegan option here, plant-based option, the Parisian gnocchi. This is a new plant-based option here. Um, it has seasonal vegetables, celery root puree, and a vegetable demi glace. Also, the gnocchi here is a beet gnocchi. So it's a non-traditional gnocchi using beet instead of potato, uh, which is very interesting. So we'll see how it turns out. All right, I've tried everything on my plate. This is actually really surprising to me. I was expecting, you know, I've heard a lot about how kind of mid the food is at Cinderella's Royal Table. So I have no expectations. Um, I still don't necessarily think this entree Paired with my appetizer and the dessert are going to be worth the $80 price tag outside of the fact that I'm dining in the castle and with princesses. That's what you're paying for. I'm actually a really big fan of this. Both uh, the regular cut of pork and the pork belly are cooked very, very well. The pork belly is not in your mouth. It has this incredibly spicy, as in lots of spices, not hot, crust on the outside that's really awesome. The couscous is perfectly cooked and has like big chunks of cauliflower in it, which I really enjoy. It has a lot of spice to it as well. Very nice, soft, cooked carrots and some greens on top. It's amazing. I know, I ate one already. You did? <laughs> Are you freaking yeah. out? It's really good. I love gnocchi and I love beets. And you can't really taste the beets. You can't. It's really good. It's crispy. I'm surprised. It tastes like there's still potato in there yeah. and maybe they added beet to the potato, but she said we there said was none. Pretty good. So I guess you can get that consistency yeah. just with powdered beets. Yeah. Anyway. If you're on the fence about whether or not you would like beet gnocchi, if you like regular potato gnocchi... It's not beety. It's not beety. Whoa. In my opinion, for plant-based offerings, this is a major upgrade over the chickpea panisse that they had for years before this. All right, for dessert, I got the Jacques and Gus, which is cheesecake with seasonal flavors and garnishes. I see strawberries, some edible flowers, some blueberries. Looks absolutely delicious. And as the story goes, Jacques and Gus got into the kitchen and deconstructed my cheesecake. Those silly mice. Um, I bet it's still gonna taste delicious though. Cheesecake courtesy of Jacques and Gus. That's tasty. It's not the best cheesecake I've ever had. It airs on the side of light and fluffy rather than creamy. Um, but it is still very tasty. If you like cheesecake, it's pretty classic. It reminds me of like a New York style cheesecake. You can get it like almost any restaurant. Um, nothing that like screams like delicious, but definitely solid. The syrup on the plate is also pretty tart, which helps balance the sweetness. So a nice end to a pretty nice meal. Uh, made all the better by 
the perfect dining setting. All right, and then uh, for the vegan desserts, there's actually two. So one was unlisted on the menu, just in case uh, we love did not go for the listed dessert, which is the coffee pot de creme. Uh, that's a coffee infused coconut custard, passion fruit gelée, and crumbled chocolate espresso beans. And then there's also this lemon sorbet. Lemon sorbet. Lemon sorbet with some fresh blueberries on top. All right, it's my pot de creme time. And this is what it looks like. It's like mousse Get the sorbet. jelly that tastes like coffee mousse. with not a lot of sugar in it. Get the sorbet. Lemon sorbet all day. It's really delicious. Light, tart, sweet and cold. Sorbet in a nutshell. Congratulations, folks. Now you know what sorbet tastes like. This is good sorbet though. It's really good. The other dessert here is the clock strikes 12. Um, they had an extra one, so they were able to bring it out for us to be able to take some photos of it and show it to you guys. This is a dark chocolate mousse with a caramel and crunchy praline center served with chocolate sauce and hazelnut gelato. Um, it looks absolutely amazing, too. And why have one dessert when you can have two? Not a fan of that. All right. I'm not a huge chocolate person, but I actually think the clock strikes 12 is the best of the desserts. We have all four desserts on our table. And the reason for that is because it's hazelnut gelato. It tastes like if Ferrero Rocher were a gelato and mousse dessert. There's actual chunks of crunchy hazelnut on top of the hazelnut gelato. There's a praline center in the mousse. At the end of your meal, you do get a souvenir print of Cinderella. And I have to say, this is one of my favorite character meal souvenirs I've gotten. It's a very pretty print. And the back of the print has all of the signatures of the princesses we met today which I absolutely love. Um, and I am going to keep this and put it on my shelf because this is a, like a really, really cute character meal souvenir. It really is, it's beautiful. Yeah. All right, good news. We did get, I got a wand and a sword they offered us on the way out if we would like them. Um, I did not have to be a kid. I didn't even have to ask, she offered and she let me have both, which is awesome. I think Breedlove is getting his own too. So we're just gonna have a lot of wands and swords, which means magic bottle and duel. Avast. Oh, yeah. Ta, ta. Yeah. The biggest bonus of a late night dining reservation like we had tonight, we had a 915 reservation. The park a sword. No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the park closed at 11. We just got out. It is 11:27. The park closed 27 minutes ago, which means we are among the last people to head under Cinderella's castle and out of the theme park. Great time for photos and just kind of a magical experience as we walk out. All right, Breed Love. What do you think of Cinderella's Royal Table? I'm a bigger fan than I've ever been. Yeah, I am. Um, I haven't been to Cinderella's Royal Table since I was a little kid. I don't remember it. Um, dining in the castle is undeniably magical. I was uh, a little bummed about having to eat so late tonight, and this, the second we stepped in the doors, that melted away for me. Yeah. Because it's so magical being in there, it's so magical seeing the princesses and talking to them, and I don't know what it was, but I really enjoyed the character interactions of speaking to the princesses here more than I did at Akershus. Did you? They happen much less frequently. I think that's what it and was. And someone, a coordinator came around and... Made sure we had seen everyone. Yes, asked mm -hmm. who, who we'd seen and uh, made note of the fact that we hadn't seen Snow White yet. Yes. And made sure that Snow White came and visited our table. Yes. Cinderella's Royal Table is a lot smaller than Ocker Shoes, so the likelihood of you getting to see the characters more times is higher at Cinderella's Royal Table. Now, if you get a late reservation like we did, it is not. You will see everyone. But the princesses did retire for the evening during our meals, while our meal was still going on, instead of rotating the entire time. So if you do want a more limited interaction like we prefer, yes. then coming towards the end of the night was actually a big uh, boon for us there. Well, we were just in there. Like, like we were in there. We were, we were in, in there, there eating. We ate in there. Having gnocchi made out of beets. beets. Like it was. Yeah. What? And um, I know that your food really blew yeah. you away until maybe the dessert course. Um, my food was pretty good. Not something I would typically say is worth eighty dollars, but with the rest of the experience. I think it's worth the cost. If you care about meeting princesses, if you care about dining in Cinderella Castle, and if you want pretty good food, then I think this is worth the cost because it's such a unique experience. If you're just looking for good food, there are places with much, much better food for less money in Disney World. Yeah. But if you're interested in dining in the castle, 
it feels every bit as exciting and magical as you want it to. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch another Princess Meal in a Castle with our review of Ocker Shoes at Epcot. See you there. Wishing star. If you didn't get it, we are Ariel and Eric. Oh yeah. <laughs>